All right, good evening, everyone. Hopefully the mic's working, yes? All right, well, welcome to uh, July 14th, 2022, Airport Advisory Board meeting. Very nice to be back in person um, after a false start a couple months ago. Um, Michelle, can you please call the roll? I can. Uh, Chairman Earl. Here. Board Member Bliss. Here. Board Member Dean. Here. Board Member Jordan. Here. Board Member Robeson. Board Member Salma yeah. <laughs> okay, you have a quorum. Thank you very much. Um, first item on the agenda, as every month, is our public invited to be heard. Would anyone like to speak to start with? Oh. oh. Sorry. Uh, yeah, my name is Phil Greenwald, Transportation Planning Manager with the City of Longmont. Chair uh, Earl, I wanted to just mentioned that we need to make sure that uh, we allow Marsha into the meeting virtually uh, and you need to do that by a, a voice vote of the of the board. A voice? Do, so if you could mo uh, move and second and then vote on okay. that item, that would uh, let her into the meeting officially. Okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion from anyone. I move. Um, hold on, Melinda. Go ahead. I move we have Marsha join us electronically. Is there a second? I'll second that. I'll second that. Two seconds. Cool. Ooh. Any discussion? Two seconds. All those in favor? <laughs> say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Now, public invited to be heard. Would anyone like to start? Start us off. There is another opportunity at the end, so we, we can do that as well. Um, seeing no one interested in speaking, we'll move on to approval of the March 2022 minutes. Anyone have any revisions from the board or I'll entertain a motion to approve them. Right. Talis. Motion to approve the minutes. Second that motion. All right, moved and seconded. Sorry guys, I'm slow on the um, microphone thing. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving the March 2022 minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, it's not listed on the agenda, but we did have May 2022 minutes in our packet as well. Would anyone like to make a motion to approve or modify the a very short May 2022 minutes? Mr. Bliss. Uh, make, I make an, a motion to approve those minutes. Thank you. A second? Mr. Dean. I will second those as well. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the May 2022 minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, moving on then, informational items. Levi, introduction and update from the airport manager. Boy, we're just moving right along here. Um, I'm Levi Brown, uh, airport manager, Vance Brand, Airport Longmont. Um, I think I've met most people here already, so that's great, and I got to meet Malcolm, so that's excellent. Um, update for airport manager, a little bit, I guess I give myself just a little bit quick introduction, since this is my first official meeting here. Um, Levi Brown, um, I started as a pilot. Um, I flew uh, commercially for several years. I'm an experienced flight instructor and a previous experienced airport manager from Leadville, Colorado. Uh, came here to Longmont in April, and uh, very glad to be here. All right, uh, airport update. Just a few little quick items to cover here on this uh, number one before we get into some other items here on informational items. Um, started quite a few projects when I got here. Um, a couple of the biggest ones we got going on are easements and lease updates. Um, I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with the concept of navigation easements and what that means to uh, the airport and the community in general. Um, working with the city's attorney's office currently to make sure that our uh, easements are up to snuff, if you will, and making sure that they're uh, providing the best coverage for our community that they can. to address. I think after we have a few more meetings, once we know exactly kind of what our options 
may be looking forward, triple check it with the FA to make sure that we're all good again. And we can come here and kind of decide on exactly what we want those to look like. All right. And if there's any other questions on leases or anything like that, I can move on to item two. A CIP update, and I got a quick little presentation for you here on airport CIP. Um, let's see here. All right, some projects we got going out there. Um, you'll see this first project. I should mention that I wrote this presentation uh, for that May meeting that didn't happen, so a couple of these items are a little dated. Um, pavement maintenance, crack seal, uh, 15000 from CDOC. Uh, they reimbursed 90% of that cost up to $10,000. That project is actually already completed. Um, they finished a couple weeks ago. Um, so that's done. Uh, I just heard from CDOT today that he's literally reimbursing us that money right now. We crack sealed all the asphalt surfaces. That's our responsibility on the airfield and still had three pallets of crack seal left over. So that's excellent. So we have some, some extra going on there. Um, Next one is pavement maintenance, uh, markings phase one. This is a project that has not gone even to pre-design meeting yet. Uh, it's currently listed on our CIP for 2022. Um, we had just this last week a little bit of a hang up on this project. Um, CDOT and the FAA are less than excited about moving forward with a pre-design meeting if they don't know 100% sure who are uh, consultants and engineer is going to be moving forward. Um, our current contract is with Dibble Engineering. Uh, we signed that contract in 2017, uh, which means they've hit their five-year limit. So we do have to put that out essentially for for bids again. Um, one of the that uh, contract is up in December. Uh, one thing that we kind of tossed around that, that got some traction with CDOT and the FAA is we could potentially put that out a little sooner. We can start working on that now and get some some uh, interested engineers in here to bid on that for us, make a determination perhaps a little earlier, and then they indicated that they may be a little more willing to start doing those pre-design meetings so we can actually get that pavement maintenance done. Uh, if it's going to happen this year, I don't I'm not 100% sure. It all depends on how quickly we can kind of get things together. Um, but that is certainly a, a step we can take to at least make things move a little quicker. So that is something we're potentially moving forward with here. Just get that out a little bit earlier so we can make decisions, make the FAC dot happy. All right. Next page. Bill project. Um, I assume probably most of you folks are familiar with the the bipartisan infrastructure law um, that came out and bill monies. Um, we will be receiving here at this airport uh, $295,000 uh, per year for the next five years. Um, <clears throat> not 100% free money. Um, of course, that's still grant money, so the FAA still has some power over that and uh, and helping us make decisions on what we want to do with that. Um, there. That law specifically mentions infrastructure and uh, terminal. Um, so I know those topics have been brought up here before, so things that we can think about. That money, of course, isn't going to get us close to building a whole terminal ourselves if we wanted to, but there's certainly options there. And I, and I think I cover this a little bit later in this presentation, too, where we could potentially put some of that money towards terminal design and stuff like that to help us uh, in the future. Um, CIP project submitted to CDOT. Some other stuff that's been submitted, uh, that pavement maintenance, um, stage two, uh, coming out of that. Um, the first one being more minor stuff, markings. The second one a little more substantial. Um, and I guess I should mention, I'm not going into incredible detail, but there's also a breakdown here of exactly where that money's coming from. Um, so 72000 from the bill's money, 4000 from CDOT, and 4000 would be city. Uh, wildlife fencing. Is a another project that I think you guys are all probably familiar with. It's kind of been hanging out on this airport for a while. It hasn't been completed, um, so that was that's last figured to be about sixty thousand, uh, fifty four from bills, three thousand from CDOT, three thousand from City. Um, so it's another project that's on the that's been submitted to the CDOT. And then again, I'm sorry, right there, General Aviation Terminal Initial Planning and Design. Uh, so they got one hundred eighty seven thousand approximately. 
oh, excuse me, allocated for that. Hey, Levi, hold on one second. Oh. Uh, Malcolm, did you have a question? I did. Uh, for Levi, you said there's a uh, the new bids for the pavement maintenance. Is there a cutoff date for that when you have to have it decided who's going to do that? Oh, who's going to do the – so the – so um, the the hang up right now on the pavement maintenance isn't isn't getting the bids. It's getting uh, CDOT and the FA to move forward with pre-design meetings to actually get that project moving forward. The last I actually checked with CDOT probably about a week and a half ago. They still haven't even received final FA approval for that. Um, that's kind of what sparked all of this conversation with them. As I was asking them when we were going to get that, and they said, "Hey, who's your engineer?" And I said. You know, it's Dibble, the contract's up in December, and they kind of pulled that. So, um, does that, I'm sorry, what, does that answer your question? Yeah, is there, so if we, is there a cutoff date? You have to have a new, somebody decided by a certain date, a new company, or? Um, there's there's no deadline date on when we got to do that. Honestly, it's, everything's kind of hanging out right now until we actually get the thumbs up from the FAA, and all the calendar stuff will kind of be set from that point. Okay, thank forward. you much. Yeah. Okay. This slide, honestly, is probably a little extra than I needed. This is straight out of um, CDOT's website. I just copy and paste it here so you can see the projects that are actually in the system. As you can see, they're, they're pretty much what I just covered there. Um, all right. All right, Levi, a couple oh. questions, sorry. Absolutely. Um, on the bill funding, mm -hmm. 295000 per year over the next five years, does it have to be spent in each of those years or can it be bunched? No, to my understanding, and I've had this conversation with the FAA, and I think that they're not even 100% sure on how to spend this money. But from what I was told uh, last week, and it was kind of echoed as what I heard at the conference also, is that you can kind of reserve that money and, and use it in one big chunk and stuff like that too. But um, keep in mind they're still kind of learning as we're going to. Excuse me. Your comment on them still learning is very accurate from every time I've heard the FAA talk about it right now. Yeah. They're um, – so I had a very interesting conversation with an engineer the other day who's been dealing with the FAA, and she actually said, um, right now, she says her her uh, kind of interpretation of all of this is that um, they don't know exactly what the money can be used for because the laws, so they're applying it all like they would a traditional AIP grant. So she said, anything that you would you feel safe on bidding on, like you normally would for an AIP grant, try to use this money with first because that's kind of the safest thing to use it for. That's what she said. No. Thank you very much. Well, uh, one more. Yep. Uh, tell us. I, I just had a comment. Mm -hmm. um, judging based on the procurement process <clears throat> for the last election, we haven't had a city council person for a year because of the mess up that the city staff had had about not having a you know, election set up for the next time around. Um, okay. I think that we should be very proactive in uh, securing this new engineer because yep. I don't want to be in the same situation where okay. because of the way things work, we're w without an engineer for an extended period of time. And that's the, I've already been having that conversation and, and Phil's 100% on the same page too. We've been reaching out. Um, we're going through um, all our old requests for proposals. We're writing up new ones right now. We're getting them all approved, squared away, good to go. So as soon as we can move forward, we're going to move forward with it most likely, I think. Anything to add to that, Phil, I think? No, I think what we're planning to do is exactly what you mentioned, but we're just reaching out to more folks mm -hmm. who can provide those services so that we have a full list of of, of, or of consulting, consulting firms. Yeah. And we really want to make sure we are making a you know, fair and open process <laughs> through our purchasing uh, folks, and uh, we'll make sure that it goes out and... We have the open bid. And I imagine we'll probably have quite a few people interested in it. And the aviation engineering community is pretty small. Um, I've been out of airport management for seven years now, and I still know most of them <laughs> out there. And I've already gotten phone calls from, hey, I hear you know you guys are going to be new, need a new engineer soon already. So I think we're going to have some, some good choices. We're going to have some good things to pick from there for sure. Anything else? Thomas question. All right, next stage uh, slide. I got to remember. It's been so long since I wrote this thing. Uh, potential future CIP projects here. I got just some really basic stuff laid out for uh, 23, 25, uh, 27 here. Um, there is potentially a new uh, taxi lane that's kind of been earmarked uh, for the south side. I, gosh, I should have added a map. I didn't think about that. 
if you guys can, I'm sure, airport board, very familiar with the airport map, correct? We currently have the taxiway. I jokingly call it the taxiway to nowhere down there that goes by the, the Quonset hut. So there's another potential taxi lane that's being, uh, would be constructed to the west of that. Um, certainly now with our the sewer project going out for bid and moving forward, um, there's m more potential for development there. So something to, to certainly think about. That is kind of on the docket right now with the engineers. Engineers uh, will be here next month. That was one of the main things that they wanted to chat about was kind of that project and where it's hanging right now. Um, again, this, these are future projects, nothing that, that we're making calls on right now, but I just wanted to give you guys kind of a snapshot of what's in the future here. Um, 2025 uh, joint seal aircraft ramps and panel replacement. Uh, this would be kind of an additional, um, you know, obligatory airfield maintenance, if you will. Uh, just we're scheduling stuff out. As we know, things are going to wear and tear when we're probably going to need monies uh, for making things uh, uh, up to standard. Again, 2025 taxiway re rehabilitation and uh, 2027 potentially a master plan update there. When uh, our current master plan is from 2012, which puts it currently at the 10-year the mark, which is usually kind of the aged out time for a master plan. After speaking with our engineers and several other people, uh, I think we're, we're fairly comfortable with the master plan where it is right now. We don't have to go out for bid for it currently. Uh, most people agree that an uh, airport airport layout plan update would be appropriate at this time and probably keep us on par with you know, getting the fundings and approvals we need from the FAA and CDOT and stuff like that. So that's kind of how we're approaching that at the moment. Right. <clears throat> and then here's just some straight up uh, throwing it out there, ideas for potential CIP projects to consider since we've got bill money coming. Um, this is all kind of taken just off of a, a general list that I put together with uh, Jeff Coleman, the, the interim airport manager, and also for notes that I found from David and input from other people that I've talked to and stuff like that. Um, of course, the development of the, the terminal and a potential new manager's office, uh, land acquisition, um, there is, of course, always talk about uh, runway extension. Um, uh, whether that would be a wise move as far as acquiring land, is, land in the near future or not would depend a lot upon the FAA and CDOT's willingness to potentially um, help us fund an airport, a runway extension, I should say. Um, to my understanding, after speaking with uh, some of my engineer contacts that have been involved in that process here in the past, the FAA and CDOT weren't super excited about allowing grants to be approved for that here. So we'd have to re reopen a dialogue with them if we wanted to do something like that. Um, the addition of taxiway B3, um, expansion of the run-up areas, um, taxiway A1, that was actually, if I recall correctly, that was one of the big recommendations in the 2012 uh, master plan. Uh, replacement of Avgas self-service and fuel storage. <coughs> um, I'm sure most of you are familiar, we do actually have an underground tank here uh, for fuel storage. That's something that we need to kind of be aware of. Um, those, of course, are, are frowned upon. And as that gets older and older, we will be kind of forced up against that wall of getting that taken out of and uh, mitigated and replaced. Uh, and the last one I hear is pave, repave airfield access road uh, from apron to south side around in the runway uh, one one. Um, access road is definitely well worn, um, half dirt, half asphalt, half something else. So just another potential project that we might want to think about moving in the future. All right, and that's what I had for the CIP update. Were there any general comments, questions on that? There's a whole bunch of questions. Oh, yeah. you. So I'm going to go one by one here. Uh, Talis, you're up first. Yeah, I just had a general question about how you would prioritize the things that you just listed. That's actually kind of how it was presented there is pretty close to what I would call a prioritization. I mean, looking at the obvious things first, striping, stuff like that, and kind of moving forward there. And that last list kind of being the up for discussion, hey, let's talk about these things, kind of a list. Thank you. Yep. 
Um, sorry, this moves around. Um, Melinda. Um, my question was the same about priority. And mm -hmm. um, as an airport user, I, I would ask for a different priority. Um, and I think the fuel has to be addressed sooner than later. The fuel needs tank? needs to be moved up, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, uh, cert that's certainly a discussion to have with the engineers also and kind of what they're seeing out of the industry. I wouldn't, uh, yeah. I mean, I'd love to have a brand new nice tank out there sitting next to the Jet A one for low load would be nice also. Uh, Malcolm. Do you know the current age of the fuel tanks at the airport? I know the Jet tank is actually relatively new, although old enough to be outside of these, the containment um, regulations that they've changed. It's just sitting there by itself. It doesn't actually have a containment, a concrete little swimming pool around it, if you will. Um, so it was, it's probably been there, it's 10, 15 years at least. I would have to double check on exact dates for you on that. The underground tank, honestly, I do not know at all what age it is. And do you know what the age is? I know with, with automotive it's different than aviation, but do you know what the age is, the limits are on underground tanks? For it, I, I can't speak with authority. I'd have to look it up in the regulations. That would be awesome if you get us that information. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll dig a little bit deeper into that. That I've had some, just some preliminary discussions with the engineers about it, and they've, the, kind of the gist, if you will, that I got from them is, uh, we'll, we'll allowed to have them in, until they tell us that we're not allowed to have them, essentially. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, Steve. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and <clears throat> welcome, Levi. Thank you. You and I have had a, a number of mm -hmm. discussions privately, and I was at the meeting, the hangar meeting last mm -hmm. month. Good turnout. I sat in the back row, mm -hmm. and I had an, um, a question for you. I couldn't really hear it because I was in the back row, mm -hmm. hangers open, and you know how that goes. Mm -hmm. So, but my, I had a long drawn out question, all ready to ask, and you've pretty much addressed a lot of this stuff. But it occurred to me, you know, when we elect a president of the United States, and I'm not trying to equate you to the president of the United States. Let's not get political here. But we, it seems like we always look at a window, a yardstick of 100 days, and that president's got to do something in 100 days. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of a window to how the administration's going to look. So you've brought up the big five that I have. Runway extension, FBO, you didn't mention re restaurant, but we could add that, mm -hmm. hangers, and the bathroom down on the south side. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering, do you have an agenda to get one of those big items done in the near future? Actually, oh my gosh, um, all of those things are kind of being moved on right now, really. Uh, the the restroom's kind of waiting until we get, you know, the sewer and stuff like that taken care of first, of course. Um, I've had multiple meetings about a couple of those items, of course, talking about FBO and, and stuff like that, uh, certainly. So my kind of, uh, I like to get things done. It's kind of my personal thing. So my mentality when it comes to doing stuff like that, and these are the priority items that we're talking about, is in the morning I have a priority list. These are my top priorities. What can I deal with every day to get these things moving forward? Um, moving forward as quickly as I can. Hopefully, you know, by one or two, I have all the communications I've done to move this stuff forward I can. I do the rest of my emails, go do my runway inspections in the afternoon, and just keep moving things forward. I'd really like to see... Um, Gosh, so much of it is dependent, let's, see, let's say the FBO, taking an example, upon if we have, if the current owner sells it, if something else occurs and, you know, the lease, it changes hands or something like that. Mm -hmm. If uh, it's, it's been briefly spoke about that maybe, hey, the city should take over the FBO, if the city all of a sudden gets really excited and does that, a lot of that depends on kind of how um, Longmont as a, as a, Together, we want to move forward, and so we're kind of dependent. It kind of depends on other people a little bit, but my opinion on that is, let's move forward as quickly as possible because in the last few years, it's it's not getting better. It's just been getting worse. So, does that answer your question? Yeah, that does. Uh, thank you very much for that. And I'm here to help. If you get a big project that you want help on, yeah. give me a call. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it because there's. Yeah. 
lots of stuff out there. Oh, that's something I suppose I should have uh, uh, added to my airport update. Um, currently in the middle of having a volunteer approved uh, for the airport, a high school student, uh, Danny came and volunteered his, his services. I'm running him through HR right now. He's doing the background checks and stuff like that. He wants to be an uh, engineer. So he's expressed interest in being out the airport as much as he can. So someone else to help research and do projects and stuff like that. Excellent. Yep. Great. Thank you. Um, tell us. Yeah, I had a question about um, the procurement of land. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the airport is becoming more and more underneath the city's wing. So would the procurement have to go through city council or how would that work and like, I guess it's more Phil question. Yeah, I imagine it would, but I'll let Phil. I'll you know. start out and you can finish it up for me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the city, the, the, the airport has always been under city control. So it's always been a city land lease and then the, the hangars are, are separate, right? So it would have to go through all our procurement processes. And that's the reason for a lot of this information tonight is the Request for proposals that we have to do for engineering, the request for proposals that is going to be talked about for the hangars coming up. Mm -hmm. That all goes to our procurement process. So the land piece is going to have to be something where the, la where the land is acquired by the city through our real estate agents. And so it'll be fair market value. There'll be negotiation and all those good things. So it's that those things will be key if that's the way we want to move forward. And, and a lot of that discussion is going to end up, I think, here as well. Uh, we'll, we'll have to get the airport uh, advisory board's uh, recommendation to city council mm -hmm. on that as well. So if that's something we want to move forward with, we'll be back to you for your recommendation to city council on that because city council ultimately makes that decision to spend dollars. Mm -hmm. But I understand that the money goes to the airport and it's a de uh, development grant for the airport, but it's spent through the city. I'm just trying to understand how that all works. For the land piece, or which well, part? Well, if we wanted to use that uh, 295 a year for, four, for five years and use some of that money to acquire land, I mean, that money was earmarked to the airport, but mm -hmm. if the city owns the land, the city could then do whatever they want with it, right? No. Not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we still have to go through the purchasing process yeah. and make sure that we go through all the legal means of, of acquiring the property. We can't... Yes. Yeah, we can have. Yes. Yeah, it's also yeah. the grant piece of it. it so. Grant assurances that we would get funding from for from the bills, and part of that is yes, land acquisition. And one of the grant assurances of that is that when we get that money, is like it's the airport's land. You gotta. Yeah, you know. that's what I'm trying to understand because there's a city, and there's the yeah. airport, and then there's the money, and then like you yep. know, how does it all work? Because yep. when, if is it given to the airport after? Like, does the airport have? Full control over it afterwards, or there's uh, there's X amount of years. If I, I I off the top of my head, I think it's something like twenty years or something like that, and then we have full control over that point. I would have to double check that. Don't quote me on that, mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely covered by the grant insurance. Much like the the issue that we were just speaking about, the lease and not having anything more than fifty years, because the uh, FA considers that a disposal of land, and they don't want you getting rid of that land. So they're con controlling that. If they're, they're giving you uh, federal funding. They say, okay, you can't have leases more than 50 years. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bliss again. One last question I forgot to mm -hmm. ask, and that's about the sewer. Yeah. Are you going to talk a little bit about that? Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, so, so let me just say my question. So we know that it's gone out to bid. Mm-hmm. Do we know how long it will take, or is that going to be, be be in the bid itself? So that, yes, will be in the bid itself. The way they have it structured mm -hmm. is that uh, they'll receive the bids back, and I think there's essentially three different options. There, There's three different ways they could award it. One's, I think, completed in 30 days. One way would be cons completed in 50, and then one is completed in 90, if I recall correctly. I would have to have that document sitting in front of me, but there's... They, they, uh, the engineers kind of put in the flexibility, or I should say the city put in the flexibility. So when they receive those bids, they can kind of pit, look at the different schedules that the, the contractor kind of puts out there and kind of decide what they feel is the best for the city. Okay, I don't have that screen up, but is, yeah. is the bathroom part of the capital improvement? So the bathroom is on kind of that, been tossed up on that list of, hey, is this a project we want to move forward with? kind of a list um, that's not tied in specifically to the Southwest sewer 
project as it sits right now. That is literally just the line that they're putting out there right now. Why? Because um, that's what we had the money for. Yeah, but what's it going to do? Just sit there idle? Well, we've already got the guys in the south hangers there uh, making preparations to connect up to it. Yeah, And then also... How many? Uh, two I know of that talk to me off the top of my head that want to know when they can get hooked up to it. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of hangers over there, and yeah. I know people would like to see a bathroom. And Yeah, and that's if, why if they we know where If we know where the sewer yeah. is going to be yeah. completed, where it's going to be halfway down the runway, should we not also be looking for someone to build the bathroom yeah we can right now the uh, we'll just have to discuss if that's what we want to kind of put money for and something else to think about um unfortunately um bill monies probably can't be used for sewer i actually have uh, a uh, contact of my old airport josh up there who made a case at the conference uh, while i was up there with the uh the um, FAA said, hey, I really need sewer related into my airport. Can I get some money for that? And they essentially told them, no, you can't use bill money for a sewer. So I really doubt that they would help us cover a bathroom project either. So that was something if we would want to move forward with, we'd have to move forward with as a city to fund probably. Unless, like I mentioned, they're still in the middle of deciding what they want to use all that money for. The FAA has a dramatic change of mind and decides that they will mm -hmm. use that for... I mean, it's a, it's infrastructure, right? You'd think a sewer would be in an infrastructure bill, but as of yet, the guidance they're giving us is that no, we won't do that. So, okay, thank you. Yep. All right, Levi. I'll ask a couple of questions. I'll start with a disclaimer. Um, okay. I work for an engineering consulting firm. We do work with airports. I'm not going to talk about any of that, mm -hmm. but I will reference my experience on a couple of these projects because I think it's relevant um, for the bathroom for the bill money, FAA has made it very clear to us that the color of the money matters. Mm -hmm. So if you can use bill money for a different project and then free up that money for the yeah. bathroom or anything else, that should absolutely be part of the discussion, yeah. even if you can't apply the bill money to it directly. Yeah, it's an excellent point. Um, then question, comment on, on a runway extension, mm -hmm. recognizing that even if we put bill money towards land acquisition, mm -hmm it nowhere near funds a runway extension, yes. not even a design <laughs> or anything else. That's a good, excellent um, point also, yeah. Not a runway extension, but I'm working with an airport in another state where they've combined bill money with an earmark from their congressperson okay. to be able to go do that, particularly when the FAA didn't want to fund it. Okay. The earmark noted it directly. Um, that's not something we've historically looked at. I don't know if the city's advocated for this in the past, but especially with a new congressperson in the next Congress mm -hmm. um, through redistricting, I, I think it would be worth the city having that discussion and thinking about that as a way to accelerate some of these projects. But that's some, certainly something that we can talk about and see if there's some potential yeah. there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else on CIP update? No. Okay. Mr. Bliss. Okay. Uh, Levi, have, have you looked at the, at the runway extension and how far we can go out yeah, on our uh, on our property. Oh, on our property. Uh, yeah. Current, so, with our property currently right now, uh, we can't really because of the uh, the runway safety area issues. We're kind of at our max limit. Um, it's been proposed before. Uh, you you said kind of in our max. I mean, what are we talking about? A hundred feet, two hundred feet. <laughs> I would say uh, not worth the expense we would have to put into expanding the runway just a little bit with all the engineering costs and putting projects out for bid and stuff like that. I mean, we'd be spending more on that than the actual construction. It'd be it'd be not a probably super wise use of money. It's also been proposed before, like, well, if we can't get the runway safety area land acquisition, we could build, you know, the concrete to the end of our airport property and then just, you know, block it off so people couldn't use it, then we could use it later. Um, that's probably less than a super wise use of funds also. Um, yeah, you know, but, but but if it's a safety concern, well, the the reason that we have that runway safety area is because it's cleared ground. I mean, that's the safety concern there. Um, the downs, you know, the risk to doing something like that is we put all of that money into building all of this concrete, and something happens, and you know, the FAA C dot never approves approves it or something like that so before we actually extend the runway at all i highly recommend that we have the fa and everyone on board 
for what we want to do before we do something like that. Because the the risk of doing something like that on our own and just not having it approved is just way too expensive. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So with no other questions, um, move on to our fee for hangar development discussion. Okay. Uh, the kind of developed, sparked by the course of sewer going in down on the south side. I've had a few different people come and express interest in potentially uh, developing some hangars on the south end of the airport in a similar manner to the the hangars that have been developed down there. Uh, of course, anything in the future would be very uniform, um, maybe perhaps unlike the north end of the, the airport there currently. Um, but enough interest to kind of put that up on the radar. Um, no request for proposals re really ready to go up right now, but I wanted to stick this in the informational items, let everybody kind of give you a heads up. We are tossing that, tossing that back and forth, you know, letting the lawyers kind of look at stuff, looking at, at other people, kind of put some documents together so we can have kind of a, a general document to put out here, perhaps in the near future. So at the very least, we could get some people to give us some proposals, and then we'd have things that we could look at to kind of decide if we wanted to move forward with some hangar development. Any questions from anyone? No. Um, Linda, uh, one sec. Go ahead. I will raise the south side restroom question for mm -hmm. my friend, uh, member Bliss. Mm -hmm. So with that development of hangers, with that investment of the sewer, what do we do to get uh, restrooms on that? I'm on the side that has restrooms, so mm -hmm. I don't have an issue on my side, but these poor guys do. So what do we do? How do we get that? That's that's a, 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 a subject that we've, we've briefly touched and kind of talked about kind of what we want to do in the future with. I think a lot of it, of course, we've got to get the sewer in first. That's the first step. So that's hopefully that's being completed this fall. Uh, moving forward from there is kind of like, what do we want to do as a city? Do we want to, to say to ourselves, do we want to, as you mentioned, you know, allocate the money ourselves, free up money somewhere else, allocate money for that, and just get some put in? Um, I know they did some preliminary cost estimates for putting a bathroom in from the figures I saw looked pretty or expensive, <laughs> but certainly something that we could move forward. Other cons ideas have been perhaps we have one of these developer comes in and they want to do a, a whole bunch of bank of hangers. Maybe we could float the idea and well, of course, we talk about this. Well, maybe say, hey, if you're going to build all these hangers. We're going to need you to build a bathroom also or something like that. See what kind of attraction we could get an idea on like that. Again, all of this is just spitballing at the moment. None of this is set in stone. Um, so certainly I'd like to represent the fact that it's being thought of. It's not something that we're just leaving and hanging out there. We just haven't really kind of decided how we want to do that in the best way yet. And I'm sure there'll be certainly more discussions about that moving forward, particularly as there's more and more going down there on the south end of the, of the airport, which, which, you know, we're moving forward on. That sewer's going in there, so that's the next step right after that. Um, it uh, bears, thank you for your answer, it bears um, weight because if you're going to put people down there, you got to have yeah. resources for them. And I don't know, I know the city does, as when I was uh, moving into a brand new subdivision that we needed a different underpass um, to get through a roadway. The city didn't build underpasses, they didn't build bridges, the developers did that mm -hmm. stuff. Where do we sit with the airport in the city? Is So is it either 100% the city, 100% the developer, or is there room for a, a share, a 50-50? I think there's some room some for I could, I could help answer yeah. that to Chair Earl and, and Board Member Jordan. What we would, we, what I think you're asking is for us to put that into the request for proposal, which is an easy thing to do. So, um, And I know uh, Council Member Martin had some other things to put into the proposal as well, which included um, you know, being able to do solar in the future and making sure that the infrastructure was basically there to do that. So those those are some things that we're talking about writing into the mm -hmm. RFP. And so mm -hmm. we'll take that under consideration when we when we put that out there. So thank you for that suggestion. Yep. On the RFP topic, I recognize it's not required to come to us, mm -hmm. nor is it required for us to do a recommendation. The last RFP that went out did not. Um, and I believe there was one bidder on it. Mm -hmm. I would just encourage you guys to make it as public as possible, including bringing it here so it is on an agenda, um, even if you're not required to, even if we don't vote on it, just so it's out mm -hmm. in the public as much as possible. So. Yeah. And and Phil and I have actually already had that discussion, and we've kind of been reading the 
the way things are done in the past. And one of the, the concept, the ideas that came up is certainly uh, one of you will be on that panel that reviews those requests for proposals to give us input. Yep. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> you well, once you've had your drink, let's move on to action items and scheduled rates and charges. All right, scheduled rates and charges. This is uh, digging an, an old one up here. So this is something that, to my understanding, from the documents that are read, has already come in front of the board. Um, I want to say this was last uh, September that this went through or right before there. Um, where, was that document on your guys' set of included documents in the... Do you remember, Phil? Um, it was not included it was in the packet. Uh, no. All right. Um, I can certainly get that out to you. But the the board had previously made a recommendation. I put this on the action item list today. I just wanted to kind of bounce that back off of you since I'm picking up where David left off and make sure that that was still kind of your same recommendation. I think at the same time, seeing how things have changed recently in the world in general and rates are a little higher across the board, we might also want to sit down and do some basic calculations and just move perhaps those base rates up just to reflect what's kind of happened since that original uh, recommendation was made by this board. Um, I have not sat down and done those calculations yet. Again, mostly just was kind of wanting to bounce this off of you guys and see uh, kind of what your thoughts were on that. I apologize for that. That should have been hooked onto that document. Does anyone have any initial thoughts here to kick us off? Um, I'm trying to yeah. go back through some of my old notes here. The, we had talked about this, I want to say, in June or July of 21. Oh, so it was a there. year ago. It okay. was a year ago. Um, we voted to uh, recommend to council that they adopt the new rates and charges. Mm -hmm. uh, I wrote a letter to that effect. I don't believe it was ever sent to council uh, for that discussion. Because um, I think at the time the attorneys needed to clean up some of the rates and charges before it moved on, and it just things happened. Okay. Um, so I don't know. If, I mean, yeah, some we, of you. I, I don't remember who remembers this discussion. <laughs> I know Talis, you weren't here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, from my recollection, and mm -hmm. we we voted that yeah. the um, the the biggest adjustment was a restructuring of the public permit fee. Yes. Um, that simplified the fee that even potentially had a reduction in revenue to the city, um, but it was designed to allevi alleviate some administrative burden. And there was minimal, if any, adjustments to the rest of the structure or the actual mm -hmm. rates themselves. Yeah, and that was kind of my... Uh Interpretation of that also, and again, I apologize that I don't have that document with me. I thought that it would be on the, the thing, but I must have forgotten to send that. We can certainly circle back around next time and cover this one too, put it on the next uh, agenda. And in the interim, I can also do some basic calculations and see where we might want to adjust the rates up to, seeing what's been going on recently too. And, and so on that point, and tell us, I'll call on you in just a second. Um, the Historically, we've kept the rates for new leases very low, even as current leases are adjusted by CPI. Yeah. Um, so I think that I've made this comment to you previously, so just making it for everyone's benefit. Look at that in light of the record CPI increases and maybe still, you know, think about lower rates for new leases as a way to incentivize people in. That yep. doesn't seem to be the problem with you know, demand doesn't seem to be the issue right now, but at least have that have that be front and center in our discussions when yeah, it comes back. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't foresee any increases beyond just what the natural increase would be just from last June to this June. I don't see us popping up prices because we want to make more money or anything like that. Just to kind of have a, a starting point that's kind of set in, you know, today. Perfect. Talis. Uh, pardon my ignorance on this. I wasn't here uh, for very long this time around, nor was I here last time this was brought up. But... Um, I've always liked a formulaic approach to this type of thing. What do mm -hmm. you guys think about some sort of uh, you know formulaic approach that includes inflation into the uh, the pricing? There is, and that's so the leases are actually adjusted yearly based on the CIP. Uh, so they it just we tag it to it every year, and it, it's supposed to kind of organically grow with you know the nation, 
and kind of move that way is kind of the concept. So that is the way we apply it. Yep. Yeah. So the question is just on new leases. Yeah. And what's that? What's the starting mm -hmm. point? Yep. Or or in some of the other miscellaneous fees that are yeah, and the structure charges. of the rates and yeah. charges, how we apply fees and stuff like yeah. that. Um, I have chatted with the city attorney's office when all this came up there with the part 16 that just occurred at the airport uh, and uh, mile high and their issues that they had with the city. Um, the city attorney's office uh, encourages us not to change too much as far as structure goes with the rate and charges because they don't want to stir the pot and it's, it's currently settling down. Um, but we certainly do need to move forward with with an update on it because it's just been hanging out there for so long. I was just going to say it was May 13th of last year. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. All right, so I missed it by two months even. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. Thank well, you. Yes. Talk about something hanging out there for, yeah, that's really been hanging out there. Wow. Okay. Um, Melinda. Are the Part 16 all resolved? Yes. To my understanding, that is completely done now. Okay. And they found in favor of the city. Okay. And yep. it's all wrapped and done and yep. moving forward. Okay. Yep. It's all done. Any other questions on rates and charges? We'll look forward to it coming back next month then. Yep. Um, last action item, advisory board frequency and location discussion. Yep, and that was just something that a few people have just kind of tossed up there, and we thought we'd just stick on the action items just to get, of course, the board's input too. Um, how do we want to, to do airport advisory boards moving forward? Are we still liking the monthly? Um, is it easier to do a quarterly? I think because, let's see, it was May was the last one we tried to have one. Just get some general discussion uh, from you guys and kind of what you think, if there's any preference you have, would it be an easier time every other month? What do you guys want to do? All right, Mr. Dean, you're up first. I, I do like the monthly. I feel like okay. it keeps uh, consistency and it keeps kind of, uh, um, kind of one after the other, and it allows us to sort of not forget stuff and sort of, I feel like if we make it two in between, we can space it out every three months or whatever, people forget stuff or we kind of forget what we talked about or, or maybe stuff comes up. I feel like it, it, every month gives us a chance to make sure we cover all of our bases. Okay. Uh, Melinda. Second that. Um, we only get to meet 12 times a year, and then we have a few fallouts with lack of quorum or cancellations. And I just think we, we lose a lot oh, okay. of momentum. I see it's kind of like self-regulating because you have Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and no. we do have a lot we want to accomplish. And I just think we'd lose, we'd lose some valuable time. Okay. And I, we don't want the city waiting on us to do anything. You know, we're, the tables usually get there the other way. And so I don't want them to be waiting for us. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, Talos, go ahead. I agree. I think that it's important to be agile, and the only way to be agile is if we have frequent meetings. Okay. Um, I, well, Mr. Bliss. Well, I'll just say, same thing, I agree. It keeps everybody on their toes, you especially. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This, the, kind All right. Of this, the second part of that uh, question that came up was location. Do we want to continue to do them in the council chamber, or do we want to do like the... the, uh, the uh, the little room next to the council chamber and more of a, a a smaller format, if you will, or something like that. Is there any preference on? Oh, I think we were talking about maybe doing it out at the airport. Oh yes, the, the the idea came up of actually doing it at the airport. Is there any kind of input on that? All right, I got people in the queue. I'm going to make my comment on the frequency as well. I agree with monthly, subject to us being willing to cancel if there's not something on the agenda. Okay. Um, I've got Mr. Bliss up first though for location. Okay. No, I think I think this is where we need to do it. It's televised; people can watch it. We can't do it at the airport; it's loud. Well, six o'clock at night, it wouldn't be too bad. Well, <laughs> certain times it could be loud, and even at six. Uh, Melinda, um, barring uh, a suitable conference room at the airport, which you sort of have up there, mm -hmm. but we do need. Um, the recorder and all the logistics, so this does make the most sense. I know um, we had been discussing, and Russ was an advocate for meeting on the field to have uh, greater attendance, but everybody knows how to find 350 Kimbark. Mm -hmm. And um, 
it's a wonderful idea, but we do have LOPA. We do have other ways to get input from uh, more people in the airport if we offer some ice cream or something. And uh, can the board, I think, could do something like that. We could opt uh, perhaps for a month to miss this meeting and do that instead or something like that as long as it um, met with the rules. So I think we have other ways to get input from the public if they can't come to this or don't want to. And we have all the structure that we need here to um, accommodate a larger crowd. If we have a larger crowd, we've had this place filled before on certain issues. So okay. we have that flexibility. Um, and then just the noise and the, you know, just the formalities of it. This is easier, I think. Mr. Dean. Um, I do like, I do agree, I do like it here. Although uh, me being at the airport, I do think it would, it would maybe select you one month to make like an airport uh, meeting. Wouldn't be a bad idea because I know a lot of people out there are already there, and if you're already there, you know, having it there wouldn't be a bad, bad way to go just to get more tenants. I mean, it seems like we have three to five people every month, which isn't bad, but it would be good to see more people and more input on the on the airport uh, in, in general. Okay, uh, Talis, go ahead. Thanks. Yeah, I I enjoy this uh, location. I think that the infrastructure is very nice, and I'm sure it's easier on the city employees who are going to be having to drive to the airport otherwise. So I, in you know, respect of you guys' commitment, uh, I I think this is a good idea. I do have a question about infrastructure in terms of getting this meeting out to more eyeballs. Um, so this Teams uh, that's being used to connect with Marsh, I don't see why not why we can't open that up and allow more people to join virtually. Um, and I also think that, uh, you know, that would allow us, if we promote that link more on social, put uh, QR codes at the airport where you can scan it automatically adds it to your calendar. There's a lot of things we can do to increase engagement. Do I understand that they were the broadcasting them all, uh, online and they had, uh, online public engagement also during COVID and over the interim, correct? They, they were do some of them were live. Okay. Um, all of them were recorded. Okay. And then available after the fact. All right. Um, hold on. I've got Linda. Go ahead. I think the issue is that then if we're it could they could be in listen only. So we could do it as a webinar where it's listen only, um, and maybe somebody. Could, well, I don't even think you could moderate chat mm -hmm. um, because that's when we were just doing uh, virtual. You had to have a moderator. You had to have somebody taking hmm. the phone call, lining them up, and, and it's a lot of admin. So this okay. alleviates all that. But I, th I think it would be a legal question, but could we do it in as a webinar and listen only that people could at least listen in? Okay. Michelle, I see you. Um, so we talked about doing a hybrid meeting since, you know, Marsha is, is out, um, and it's just not possible. In this in this room, there is no way. It's too hard to be able to get everybody to be able to hear on on the opposite end, and we can't have them see. So it just be audio, and they can't hear us. And it's just too it it's too much. They can't get it to work. Great. So really, there's this one option, and and it's the teams that like we have set up here, um, and. Technically, LPM should be here at every meeting to record them. We don't use any of the systems in here. It's just them setting up a little digital camera, um, and they record. So they can record from anywhere. It doesn't matter if it's here, Public Works, wherever. So. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Dean. Yeah, I would say, Levi, um, that would be a good idea for, like, the team just because um, – I'm, I'm an EA chapter president, and, and until somebody had told me, I didn't know there actually was an airport advisory board. So I feel like a lot of people, if they knew, maybe they would actually show up, but if they don't know or have a way to know. Yeah. Um, I had no idea. I've lived in Longmont since 1991, and I had no idea there was an airport advisory board. And that's why I've been trying to loop it into more of the communications that I put out at the airport, too, just kind of let people know what's going on. And that would be, I think that would, be, yeah. that would make a big difference. Mr. Salamatin, go ahead. Michelle, uh... I'm confused. I, the city council has people calling in. Um, they don't. Everybody has to be here in public. They have oh. to be here in person. But during the COVID, they had people calling in. They, because they were virtual. They were all virtual meetings. Mm -hmm. And we did, have, we did have one month of meetings where they could call in, and it just didn't work great. So mm. they've... Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All 
Okay. Do you? So that is the last action item that I have. Okay. Do we need to take action on this? Yeah. Yes, that one certainly can. I mean, I believe the consensus I heard was no change. Um, we vote in our first meeting of the year to adopt yeah, the frequency. If anyone would like to make a motion to either reaffirm or change it, I'll, I'll entertain it, but I don't know that we need to necessarily. Uh, Malcolm. I'll make a motion for once a month to confirm. Is there a second? We've already done that. Oh. Yeah. We have done that. Okay. It's once right. a month. And I guess our discussion would be potentially having one meeting a year, year at the airport, the airport yes. if you want, um, in a different format. I would, I would be motion for one meeting a year at the airport to get people in. The, to get people in. Okay. Is there a second to the motion? I'm not hearing a second. Okay. No second, unless. No? All right. Um, no second for the motion. Sorry. I'll second. You can't second okay. your motion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, Alice. I'd motion that we prioritize marketing and uh, engagement of these types of meetings. Is there a second for the motion to prioritize marketing and engagement of the meetings? I'll second that motion. Thank you. Um, any discussion on that? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Right, I've got four and, uh, and a zero, uh, abstain there. Um, I would just comment my personal preference for the airport meeting is that we absolutely do one once a year, but I don't want to bind us to that right. um, at this time and kind of make it part of our bylaws. Um, mm. I think we absolutely should. Um, I think there's some years it probably makes sense to do two or three or whatever it is, but mm -hmm. have that based on the discussions that are going to be on the agenda and make it at that time rather than committing, you know, a specific number at this point. That's just my opinion. Any other discussion from anyone? Um, Melinda, go ahead. To the marketing and promotion, um, we do suffer also some empty chairs and that would help us get more people involved, see the process, become, decide if they were to become interested in it. And because uh, we have several uh, seats coming empty mm -hmm. in December and we don't have a quorum, we can't get anything mm -hmm. done. So we do need um, either the city line, I think we were in the city line last year. We've shied away from being, um, having a public presence because of all the part 16 and a lot of community um, flack about it and Mm -hmm. avoidance we were avoiding so we were keeping a low profile given that that's all resolved um, I think we can emerge and and uh, bring the profile up for the purpose of input from airport investors and then for the purpose of mm -hmm. recruiting additional board members as the seats become available thank you anyone else do you have anything else from you on that that's what I have all right um, yeah that closes out our action items then. Um, and so we're on to a final public invited to be heard. Is there any member of the public who'd like to? Please come on up. I have no clue and, protocol, so can you guide me through that? Please? Yep, so Just protocol is you have three minutes. Um, five minutes. Oh my goodness, we changed it to five minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. you. Yeah, start with your name and address, address your discussion, your comments to the board, um, and keep it civil. I'll start the timer once you once you introduce yourself. Okay, uh, I'm Paul Hollingshead. Live on Pike Road uh, in town, 3800 Pike Road. Uh, a question about will the adoption of unleaded avgas change the plans for uh, the tankage, and will the state or the county force us into that? And my second comment is: Will there be an airport expo? in one of the next few upcoming years. Thank you very much. Um, I regret that the format of public comment means I'm not gonna re respond to you directly, but I would encourage all of us to in the board comments in the next agenda item. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to?
please come on up and introduce yourself. My name is Rick Brennan. I have an airplane on the south side of the hangar, so I'm pretty sensitive to the uh, uh, bathroom issue. Um, February is a tough time. Oh, I don't hold it against me. I live in Boulder, um, but I but I, I like your airport a lot better than the Boulder airport, so I fly out of it. Um, I've got a suggestion for you. Um, I think that an airport advisory um, team committee uh, that you've got is going to be a lot more powerful if you're well informed. And um, I work in the aviation industry um, right now. I'm getting long in the tooth, and uh, so I'm doing mostly consulting at this point. But I've been working on uh, NextGen, which is the next generation uh, air traffic control system, uh, unmanned aircraft, military and commercial, um, and um, also airport structures for next generation urban air mobility and, and those types of things. Um, my strong belief, and, and it's held by an awful lot of people, is that we're going to see the biggest change in transportation in the history of the world in the next 10 years. And it's inevitable that we uh, change our focus to air. Uh, next gen, the, the air traffic control system, is a movement from centralized air traffic control targeted toward large tubes flying in the sky to a three orders of magnitude increase in 3,000 AGL and below traffic um, that is uh, partially unmanned and partially short range um, air, air mobility. Radical changes are going to happen, and <clears throat> we're always seeing tremendous amounts of investment in, in these areas, and we'll start seeing the first market entry for air vehicles that are going to start to change the way we think about travel in five to eight years. So smart um, cities are looking at their airports as an integrated part of the transportation grid and are starting now to invest in the infrastructure. Um, I've also worked very closely with the FAA. I know how the FAA thinks in terms of how it allocates money. Um, they look for business arguments. So being educated on the markets and what, where they're going and what the return on investment for an FAA investment in, the, in a city's airport is a big, big deal. And if you have trouble getting money through the FAA, it's because you're not making a good business argument. Um, I think we can make great business arguments here. Uh, finally, I, I think you should involve guys like me who are at the airport. There's a lot of incredibly smart professionals and invite us to come in and speak about subjects we know about. So if you would put out, hey, we really want to know about next gen or uh, uh, urban air mobility and what its impact would be for Longmont or uh, I can list you 20 subjects. Um, and if, if one of those presentations was happening at each one of your meetings, two things would happen. You'd get a lot smarter and a lot more people would show up at the meetings and provide input. Thanks. Thank you very much. Anyone else? You can start with the introduction. I forgot the timer. Don Dulce. We have a hangar at, air, at, the, um, at the airport, live in Longmont. Um, the question, Can you actually do your address, Mr. Dulce? Um, 335 Pratt Street. Thank you. Um, the details on um, paving and maintenance at the airport, um, did that include painting the runway, putting the striping down? I, I, maybe I missed that. Yep. Great. Yeah, because we landed today on the 1-1, uh, and there was really no paint all the way up to the first 1,000 feet. It's pretty much all. Great. Okay. Um, and you had mentioned the Stewart Project, I think. Was that the name? The Southwest so Sewer Project? I, I'm oh, going Sewer to Project. Step okay. in. I'm sorry. I, I misunderstood that. Yeah. Um, I okay. thought there was a possible uh, plan to uh, do some kind of development on the south side already. The, the one I recall that... Uh, I don't think ever came back to the board it was probably about 18 months ago, maybe less, maybe back in October or September, was a project by Bill Dunn. Don Dunn. And he, he proposed a, a pretty comprehensive development of the south side of the airport. And then that just went into the wastebasket, I think. And I've never heard whether his project was approved or needed to be modified or if he pulled out. So I think it would be good to find out what happened because he had a very comprehensive program for developing the south side and it looked pretty good as a joint partnership with uh, the city and the, and the airport. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? 
Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public invited to be heard and move on to board, council reps, and or staff comments, starting with board members. Mr. Bliss, you're up first. Anyone else? Get in line. Uh, I'm, I'm going to second that. I, I remember Dan Dunn making a very good presentation on hangers, and I don't know whether uh, Manager Brown has talked to Dan. You have? Okay. So, I mean, he's the guy that's doing the, the hangar development. And, you know, that's all I have to say. Uh, Mr. Salamatin. Uh, I really am glad to be here. Uh, last two months we haven't been, so thank you everyone for being here. Um, I do like the idea of more engagement, so I believe Rick mentioned something about uh, having an educational segment. I would be okay to think about that uh, for us all can contemplate that because it does improve our knowledge and potentially increases engagement. So anything we can do to increase engagement, I think we should do. So, um, yeah. Thank you. I, I would second that as well. In our recent bylaw adoption, we, um, we added the input of the board through the chairman to influence the agenda. So I would encourage anyone who has suggestions for agenda topics to send those to me through the city staff, which is through Levi. Um, and we will absolutely consider that. Um, Melinda. I um, also agree. We'd love to have that kind of thing on the agenda and also like Dan Dunn's proposal. I think it was a timing issue um, after he presented that other things took priority and, and it fell through the cracks. So uh, he did uh, give us an elaborate um, uh, depiction of what he had in mind for the airport and a lot of options that were very interesting and that we'd love to revisit and again see what the uh, um, if they're being considered, if they're possible, that sort of thing. And then to the question about the air show um, that's on our agenda, we are, uh, Russ Robinson, our other member, is getting his Air Boss certification right now. And he has uh, one more air show and then I think some testing probably to go through, but we will have our own Air Boss at Longmont. And um, that is one of our biggest expenses in logistical competing with other air shows because of the dates. So he just did the research on um, the 200 mile ring around us for air show competition. And we're looking, we, we typically been in June, I've always voted for Father Day, Father's Day weekend. Um, it's a little, it's gonna come up too quick to pull off for 2023. Um, there's not a lot of traffic in this area in the middle of July for air shows, but there's a reason for that because it's hot and I won't use any other words. Um, so I, that's not my first choice, but if everybody else wants it, I'll do it. And then uh, September, October is, you know, we typically, if we get a snowstorm, it melts fast. Um, I did do one air show a couple years ago uh, through a capstone project and we had snow the day before and it was fine. And that was in the spring even. So September, 2023 is gonna be the first goal that I'm gonna put out there and we're gonna bring it up on the agenda for next month. And we still have to put together that leadership team. So anybody that uh, anybody that is, first of all, willing to volunteer, it's not a board function. It just, we tend to be the people who are closest to it. And um, volunteers to take, uh, to take the uh, major components. We, I've got all, the, I've worked on that board uh, for a couple of air shows. So we have different large components that need to be uh, taken on. And so we'll be looking for volunteers for that as well. And so the goal, my, my, the, um, what I will propose is September 2023 to see if we think we can make that and get some of the incumbents that have worked on air shows in the past to re-engage and work with us on it. Otherwise, we'd have to push to 2024. But we're doing it with an eye toward not competing. We used to have an alternating agreement with Boulder, so we were every other year with them, and that's all. Uh, they're not having theirs, and it all got off, off the rails with COVID. So. We're, it's on the top of my list. Um, any, Councilmember Martin, I know you, you've uh, raised a hand. Is it about the expo or about something else? Uh, no, I'm, I'm ready for uh, council comments. I will make sure you have that. Before that, does anyone have any expo comments um, based on what Melinda briefed us on? Or we're going to save it for next month for an agenda topic. Any other board comments then before we move on to council? Councilmember Martin, floor is yours. 
Um, uh, yeah, I would like to remark uh, with, first with regard to the air, airport or uh, hangar RFP. Um, it, it's my experience, and uh, Phil can probably correct me if I'm wrong. Um, oftentimes, uh, when the city issues RFPs, those uh, the details are kept uh, internal to the staff and then to a review committee um, to avoid uh, potential improprieties with somebody having inside information uh, too early. Uh, so I never get to see the RFPs, even though I really often very much want to um, just to make sure that I like the requirements and not because I want to give somebody an edge. Um, but uh, I, th I think that that, that the um, answer that um, Phil and Levi gave that having a board or member or two on the, the proposal review board is probably the best that we can do. On the other hand, bringing forward suggestions for what goes into the RFP definitely is um, under is, is something that this board can do. Um, so if there's another month left to go, um, then that can be a topic for discussion uh, next month or otherwise I think they can be communicated uh, to the staff. Um, the other thing about uh, Mr. Dunn's proposal uh, that I would like to say is that the, uh, the thinking that came to me, and I'm just speaking for myself at this point, was that um, it was a really attractive proposal for a general aviation park, but that, but that the city has more commercial visions for the development of the airport. Um, and I hope that those, those things will be reflected uh, in the airport RFP. Um, so uh, one of the purposes of having an RFP out here like this is to, is to codify the city's vision for the way the airport should be developed. And, um, you know, I, I hope to, to see bids that will, that will reflect that. And once the RFP is out there, I've, of course, we would certainly um, uh, invite Mr. Dunn to be a bidder. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Um, I, I would ask you a question, Councilmember Martin. It's been a while since we've made an official recommendation to Council. It's been a while since we've given a report and an update to Council, which probably should be on our agenda for next month. Is there anything at this moment that would be really helpful for us to be communicating to Council about beyond the topics that we know are coming up over the next couple months, since that is our, that's our job? Um, yes. Uh, I am very interested, as are um, many of the pilots that I am in regular communication with, um, in sustainable aviation. And, you know, we're, we're looking at where the FBO needs to go um, where, um, uh, you know, a, a flight school needs to go. Um, and uh, so I think that the board, the board's ideas about that are important to hear about. Um, you know, you know, I've said that to you particular, Mr. Chair, before, and um, uh, I think that, uh, especially with uh, Cessna's uh, recent acquisition of Pipistrel, have I got the name right, Pipistrel? Um, that uh, uh, we're going to see uh, electric aviation moving faster than it was predicted a year ago. Um, so I'd, li I'd love to hear ideas about that. Thank you. That's really helpful to hear that. Um, I will note Levi, through his official job and me through my day job, we're at the Colorado Airport Operators Association Conference last month. Mm -hmm. And electric aviation and EV charging and infrastructure was the topic of a good third of the panels. Mm -hmm. um, and from CDOT, from the FAA, it is absolutely top of mind for, for a number of us right now. Um, I just 
personally, I don't know what the direction is yet to make a recommendation or, or do it, but it is absolutely top of mind as we think about these developments. Um, the thing that stuck with me that this was, I think this was the um, NREL guy, the National uh, Renewable Energy Laboratory presentation. They were talking about nine seat aircraft at an airport like Denver. Obviously a different use case, but it just, it, the, it stuck with me. Charging two or three of them at the same time was equivalent to like 10 to 20% of the entire Denver airport's electric usage over the entire day from that, from a demand perspective. It's not from the, you know, kilowatt hours, but what you actually need the infrastructure to support. Um, and so it was just kind of that, that infrastructure, I think, is a really important discussion, particularly since we actually own the utility and can do things that a lot of other municipalities can't. I think that's absolutely, it's a huge advantage for us as some of those standards get defined to be able to move faster than others. Yes, that's a huge advantage for us in terms of attracting um, electric aviation uh, traffic here at the airport. It also advantages the city in terms of, because uh, the batteries needed to back up that fast charging. Yeah. Uh, uh, also provide a distributed energy resource for the city. Uh, you know, for example, at times when wind and solar are falling short, we've got this big bank of batteries at the airport that can be used, um, you know, to keep things going. Uh, and our power provider, Platte River Power Authority, is very interested in siting batteries at strategic locations like that. So they might um, help us with the always never enough funding of a project like that. So yeah, those are those are just some things to think about and I hope that we all will. Thank you. Um, staff comments, Levi or Phil? We don't have any further comments. I was glad that you brought up the idea that if there are agenda items that people would like to discuss that they please go through Levi and we will get those to you and as board chair, you will be the person who decides when and how those go up. So appreciate that comment. Yeah. I, I don't like that role of deciding without um, input from everybody. So please, as you have ideas, as you have input, um, make it very clear. And we'll, we'll make sure that we're reflecting that input. Let's call for board comments. All right, well, seeing none, we're on to adjourning. So thank you all very much. And that'll conclude our meeting tonight. Have a good evening. Thank you.